Over the last year or two, there has been a huge increase in the popularity of brewing espresso with paper filters, and a cacophony of voices singing its praises, but not a ton of information about the reasons and the benefits behind the technique. Now, the idea itself isn't new, and was brought into the mainstream consciousness by Scott Rao back in 2019, though I don't think he was the first to do it. And for me, it's something I've been doing off and on, because it doesn't always produce the best results in the cup, at least to my personal preferences. So in today's video, I'll address the topic of filtering your espresso, covering the why and whens of applying a filter, if you should rinse it, and what differences a simple disc of paper is capable of producing. And of course, I know there are folks of varied experience levels who watch these videos, so as always, I'll break the entire video down into easy to jump to chapters so you can get to the one that you find most relevant to you. But before any of that, a quick word from this video's sponsor, Stand Art Magazine. If you're into coffee, its culture, and learning about the world around it, Stand Art Magazine is the perfect addition to your brew bar or coffee table. With quarterly releases, they shed light on issues both inside and outside of the cafe, highlighting people who elevate the industry, and deep dives into new ideas around all things coffee. To sweeten the deal, each issue also includes a sample of coffee from some of the world's best roasters, to give you the full sensory experience. You really can't beat the combination of fresh coffee and fresh print. So head over to standartmag.com slash Prometheus, use the link in the description or codes Prometheus at checkout to snag $5 off your very own subscription of Coffee and Culture shipped direct to your door with a money back guarantee. And if you're still on the fence, you can try it first for just the cost of shipping. There's not much to lose and a lot to gain. If you're new to espresso or this idea in general, I think first explaining the why behind the paper filter is pretty important. So in the simplest of terms, a paper filter on the bottom of your basket keeps the ultrafines in your espresso grinds that are migrating downwards with the flow of water and pressure from clogging your espresso basket openings. Now this reduced risk of choking your shot in turn allows you to grind finer, thus increasing the overall surface area where water touches coffee, and this also increases its ability to pull out those dissolved solids. This means higher extractions, which is essentially getting more flavor out of your coffee. The question of when you should apply a paper filter is less based in science and more based on your personal preferences and what you're looking to get out of that cup of coffee. But there are some aspects I take into account when choosing whether to filter or not, and it may surprise you, it's not always increasing extraction. Of course, it can assist in getting more out of those harder to extract light roasts, and really any coffee for that matter. But instead, when I'm trying to decide whether I'm going to filter an espresso, I take two main factors into consideration, and that is clarity and mouthfeel. In terms of mouthfeel or the perceived texture of a shot, the use of a paper filter captures and holds back not only the ultrafines, but also some of those natural oils produced through the extraction process that help develop that sensation. And on the inverse, the removal of these same things help produce a higher cup clarity, meaning it makes those more nuanced and delicate flavors in a coffee more upfront, more discernible. So in short, these factors are something worth considering while you decide whether to filter your coffee or not. But there's no right or wrong answer. Just consider the coffee, your palate, and what you're looking to get out of it. Now, it's hard to talk about paper filters at length without mentioning rinsing, and this is where things may get just a little more controversial. Because rinsing paper filters has always been pretty deeply ingrained in modern third wave specialty coffee preparation. And in the case of espresso, it can and does make a difference, but not really in the way you'd expect. And I think the headline here is, rinsing filters is optional, not optimal. I mean, if I had a dollar for every time an armchair barista in my comment section proudly and confidently proclaimed that the shot I pulled without rinsing the filter tasted like paper, I'd have a lot of dollars. And as believable as that hot take may sound, I mean, it does sort of make sense in theory, but in practice, I've yet to taste paper in even one dry filtered shot. I even went so far as to brew just the filter on its own, and there was no paper flavor to speak of, just a slight sweetness and a bit of creaminess was added to the mouthfeel of the water itself. Meaning at least with the trimmed AeroPress filters I use in this video, they do impart a detectable difference into plain water, but I wouldn't say it's a negative one, and finding that same difference in a shot of espresso is pretty hard. Now that we've covered and have a good grasp on the why and when of filtered espresso, let's get into the differences it can make in the cup. So from left to right, what you're seeing is unfiltered, 
dry filtered and wet filtered shots of the same coffee, grind, dose, and yield. As you can see, the filtered shots, as we discussed earlier, have a faster flow rate, as it resists that potential slowdown that Fine's migration produces. And when it comes to the taste and flavor of these shots, I will say there are some general differences that I find, at least in my experience, that are present in most coffees. The unfiltered espresso tends to carry through the heaviest body, a moderate balance between sweet, bitter, and acidic, and a lingering aftertaste that sort of sticks to or coats your palate. The rinsed filter shots are usually brighter, more acidic up front, which I think is a byproduct of the increased flavor intensity and clarity. Of course, when it comes to mouthfeel, they're often thinner or juicier. And finally, dry filters seem to land somewhere in the middle, as they often reduce that upfront punchiness, have a moderate balance and clarity, but still carries through the mouthfeel that all but disappeared in the rinsed filter. And finally, for my data junkies, let's talk extraction. The filtered shots I tested against unfiltered were always higher, and considering the only variable that was changed is a little paper disc, either rinsed or dry, it's an impressive bump with minimal effort, especially considering that all these shots shown here were done with the same brewing parameters, and no adjustments were made to widen the gap. In the end, it's hard to deny or ignore the potential benefits of filtering your espresso. I mean, it may be somewhat trendy at the moment, but at least it's effective at producing the results it advertises, which is generally higher extractions. And I know I've said this before and I'll probably say it again, but higher extractions doesn't guarantee better coffee. I mean, don't get me wrong here, chasing high extractions is fun, and it's a worthwhile learning experience for every barista as they explore and develop a better understanding of the brewing process. And I'll never deter anyone from chasing that dragon, but having done it myself, I can say that the grass isn't always greener. The flavor intensity of an average espresso is already pretty high, and when I've exceeded the 25% yield range, rarely have I liked the outcome, since it can be incredibly overwhelming on your palate. So when it comes to using paper filters for your espresso, it's as personal as your dial-in, or the type of beans you choose to buy. I mean, it's a variable that can make a drastic change to your cup qualities, and it may work better for some coffees than it does for others. And this brings me to my final point. You should definitely try this yourself. This video isn't here to provide you with a yes or no answer, or whether it's worth your time or not to filter your espresso. Instead, it's here to provide opinions and insight and hopefully motivate you to try something new or approach filtered espresso with a bit more direction. And with all that said, I think it's time I start wrapping this one up and as always, pass the conversation on to you. What are your thoughts on filtered espresso? Is it something that you do? And if so, how often? And if you've never tried it, I'd love to hear your thoughts after giving it a go. So drop your answers to those questions and any others you may have in the comment section down below. And as always, I'll see y'all next week. Thanks for watching, and if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Hit that little bell button for notifications of new videos posted every Friday. Check out my Instagram, at Spromethius, for content throughout the week. Help support the channel by considering becoming a member for exclusive access. And as always, stay caffeinated. Pony boy.